This is heaven, maybe that's just you I don't trust my judgment cause I'm just 22 When my tits run in circles, my heart's out in the rain I know that this I started Monday morning the same way I do pretty much every morning by chugging a bottle of water to start my day hydrated. And then I started making myself a Greek yogurt and fruit bowl for breakfast. There's no need to say sorry. I can get you off my mind and you can tell me this don't feel right yet. I know that you want me. For lunch, I decided to make salmon with ginger soy noodles with this stir fry kit. I got this one from Sprouts, but most grocery stores have some similar version and they're super convenient. Then it was time to just prep the salmon by drying it and then portioning and seasoning. And here is the final product, easy because I only needed to prep the salmon and delicious. You'll see throughout this video that I'm obsessed with Quest protein chips and this flavor tastes exactly like Lay's barbecue to me. And for dinner, I actually decided I wanted breakfast, so I decided to make an omelet with an egg and extra egg whites. For Tuesday's breakfast, I decided to make a breakfast sandwich on an English muffin. For lunch, I decided to make a homemade version of a Taco Bell crunch wrap, so I started by sauteing some beef and putting taco tortillas in the oven to crisp at 350. And after 10 to 15 minutes, the taco tortillas were crispy and the beef was done and it was time to assemble. So you start out with a large burrito sized tortilla, add the meat, then top with sour cream or Greek yogurt, then salsa, then cheese that I forgot to add. Then you add the crispy taco tortilla for the crispy layer and this is optional but I ended up breaking apart the outsides to make this area smaller so it would be easier to fold later and you'll see why. Then I like to top that with some sliced avocado followed by some diced tomatoes and whatever greens I have on hand and this time I had arugula. And finally, I used an upside down bowl to cut out part of another large tortilla so I could finish the part of the crunch wrap. You put that on top and then start folding in the outsides to make this geometric crunch wrap shape. And having a smaller inner layer gives you more room to make the folds, which is why I broke apart the crunchy layer before. Flip that seam side down onto your hand or spatula, then put it in a hot pan with oil to crisp. When it's golden brown, you flip to sear the other side. I made one crunch wrap each for both me and my boyfriend and they were so good. It's always one of our favorite things to eat for lunch because of how filling it is and tasty it is. Like I mentioned before, I love snacking on Quest protein chips and I enjoy them just as much as regular chips but find them way more filling from the protein. I cook for both me and my boyfriend 90% of the time but these are actually his hands prepping onions for dinner and the reason why he's cutting them a little bit strange is because he likes using this manual food chopper that we have that lets him chop veggies just by throwing chunks into it and pulling the handle. 
This was all to make his spicy sausage meatloaf, which I love, so he did that for the onions and carrots, and we actually used oatmeal instead of breadcrumbs for more fiber. And then into the bowl, we also added milk, spicy Italian sausage that he took out of the casing, along with ground beef and seasonings like Worcestershire sauce, salt, pepper, and chili flakes. I'm just wishing you were mine. Lastly, we put a ketchup and brown sugar mixture on top for the glaze and then put it in the oven. So meatloaf isn't very photogenic and I think it's pretty much impossible to make it look as good as it tastes, but this was so good and I love the untraditional spicy kick. Wednesday's breakfast was a simple lox bagel with cream cheese and capers. For lunch, I decided to make a healthy, low-calorie personal pizza recipe that I've made a bunch of times now. The base is Greek yogurt, a little bit of flour and coconut flour, baking powder, and some seasoning. And I like this better than cauliflower pizza crust because it has more of a chew and I think that's from using real flour. I'll leave the recipe for the dough in the description box, but basically you mix everything up in a bowl and then you start spreading it on a piece of parchment paper on a baking sheet. And this is kind of the hardest part because it's a little bit tricky, but it's easier with a silicone spatula. You bake that in the oven or air fryer for about 20 minutes and then you can add your toppings. So I used some pasta sauce, some low-fat cheese, and salami. Put it back to broil for about two minutes and then you're done. For dinner, I just wanted leftover meatloaf with a side of these pre-prepped oven roasted potatoes and onions that I cooked in an air fryer, and then I ate those with a side of veggies. The next morning, I wanted to make breakfast tacos with eggs and soy chorizo, so I scrambled some eggs with extra egg whites like I usually do and cooked the soy chorizo. For lunch, I decided to make crunch wraps again to use up the rest of the ingredients I had left over from earlier in the week, so same as before, but this time I remembered to add cheese. Some people hate tuna, but for those of you who like it like me, I really like these Starkist flavored tuna packs and I ate it on these Quaker rice cakes as a snack. And for dinner, I cooked this lemongrass chicken pack from Costco because convenience is usually priority for dinner time after the gym where you just heat the chicken and sauce in a pan. The next day was me and my boyfriend's six year anniversary, so I started on cheesecake bars I wanted to make for him because cheesecake is his favorite dessert. I knew that they would need to chill overnight in the fridge. On Friday morning, my boyfriend and I both wanted chocolate chip waffles, so I used my favorite mix, which is surprisingly healthy, even though it feels really indulgent. And then it was 
time to take the chilled cheesecake out of the fridge so I could cut them into bars. And then as soon as I was done, my boyfriend actually ended up having one of them for breakfast. For lunch, we just ate the last of the leftovers to keep it simple and light before our dinner plans. For dinner, we arrived at a really nice restaurant and we had a lot to celebrate because surprise, we got engaged. Earlier, before dinner, while we were walking around in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, my boyfriend got on one knee and proposed. As you can see, I was very emotional, but I said yes, and I can't wait to marry my best friend. So needless to say, we were both very happy during dinner, and the beautiful food made it a thousand times better. Each plate was like a work of art and tasted amazing too. So if you're ever in San Francisco, I highly recommend Sorrel. Yeah, I shot it from the rooftops. I gotta jump out of a window if you On Saturday morning, I wanted a fruit smoothie bowl for breakfast, so in my blender, I put in some soy milk, frozen banana, strawberries, and an acai pack, and blended it all together. For lunch, I planned on cooking a spicy chicken stir fry, and I started out by making the stir fry sauce with soy sauce, chili sauce, honey, and fish sauce. The recipe works with any veggies, but today I used asparagus and I prepped those by snapping off the woody ends. Then I chopped some green onion and chopped the asparagus into bite sized pieces. After the veggies were cooked, I added the chicken and then started breaking it up, and then I added the stir fry sauce when it was almost completely cooked. Dinner was a spread of takeout from a local Afghan restaurant that we brought to our friend's house to eat in their backyard. Sunday's breakfast was chocolate chip waffles with berries yet again, and then for lunch I wanted to make a spicy bulgogi bolognese pasta, basically a sweet and spicy Korean version of an Italian bolognese sauce. So first step was to chop up onions, garlic, carrots, and celery, similar to the Italian version, and then grate some ginger. I heated some oil in a heavy bottomed pot, and then I added the onions and got some straight carrots in there, and then when that had some color, I added the rest of the carrots and celery. Then I added the garlic, grated ginger, and gochujang, which is a Korean chili paste, followed by the beef. I broke up the beef as it was cooking, and then when it was completely browned, I added the soy sauce, the sugar, and water. Then I closed the lid and lowered the heat for it to simmer for a while, and when it was almost done, I cooked the spaghetti. And for our last meal of the week and this video, Sunday dinner was kind of a continued celebration of our engagement on Friday, so we ordered takeout from this bougie Korean restaurant by a famous Michelin star chef in SF with a variety of different dishes. Loving me is what you need, it is so simple. Loving me is what you need.